Hi everyone. Let's take a look at problem 6-7, which is a yield to maturity problem. We have the Heyman Company's bonds. They have four years remaining to maturity. Interest is paid annually. The bonds have a thousand dollar par value and the coupon interest rate is 9%. Okay, on part A we're asked to solve what's the yield to maturity to, at a current price of 829 or 1,104 dollars. Okay, now I've worked this one ahead of time so let's just bring some other factors to light. First off, we know the par value is a thousand dollars. The coupon rate is nine percent. The interest payments then are ninety dollars. Okay, and we can calculate that by taking the par value times the coupon rate. All right, and the time horizon or the length of time we're looking at is four years. All right, now let's bring a couple calculations uh, uh, to light here. All right. The current price at $829, I probably should put a dollar sign around that to make it consistent with the others, results in a yield to maturity of 15% and I've used the rate function. Let's walk through how we do that. I'll click right here so we can get the, uh, the pop-up appearing. Okay, the number of periods comes from cell B15, which is 4. The payment amount is the interest payment appearing in cell B14, which is $90. Okay, the, the present value is the current price. And we'll enter that as a negative amount so that we can uh, enter the cash outflow we'll get at the end is $1,000. Because remember, we have to pay attention to the signs if we're using a calculator or Excel um, to solve financial problems involving uh, time value of money. And the future value is the thousand dollars given in B12. So we can use the rate function and we come up with 15 percent. Okay. What if we do this, we solve the same thing again for one thousand one hundred and four dollars um, if that's the current market price. Okay, the exact same approach comes up. Let's format that 829 so we see what the current price is. And again, I'll hit the uh, uh, the F2 button off of the function bar to bring this up, or you could hit the F2 button, I said that incorrectly. And we drop in the values again. Again, time horizon of four years, the same uh, periodic interest payment. Now the present value is $1,104, and the future value is the $1,000 we'll get back uh, after we've invested in the bonds, right? We need to pay attention to the signs, so again, we flip the present value and we come up with a, uh, a yield to maturity of 6% using Excel's rate function. All right, let's take a look at Part B now. Would you pay 829 for one of these bonds if you thought that the appropriate rate of interest was 12%? Um, in other words, the required rate of interest was 12% and explain your answer. All right, let's just bring that to light. Um, and in Part B, what you'd say is, uh, a yield at 12% would come out to be $908. Let me explain uh, how I do this. Uh, oh, I use the absolute value, so let's take that off and then I'll eventually put it back in and show you. Okay, and bear with me, I'm going to edit this. Now we'll hit the F2 button. Um, one more second here. Let me get this. Let me get this so that it pops up. There we go. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the rate function, and I'm going to use 12% as the required rate, right? Um, then the number of periods is four. The payment amount is um, is ninety dollars, same as before. The future value is a thousand dollars. Okay. Oh, and I said that incorrectly. Rather than using the rate function, I'm now using the present value function. It says it right here. I apologize, everyone. So I want to determine the present value if it was 12%. And what we come up with is $908. Now remember, it's negative. Uh, it's negative because I entered the cash outflow as being positive. So in order to present this uh, in a positive number, 
I'll just surround the whole formula with the absolute value function, which is ABS. Put that around the end. There I'm forced into a positive number. Okay, so at a 12% yield to maturity rate, um, what I what I wind up with is $908, and we and we're asked, would you pay $829? And so we see that uh, it's actually a, a good option for us. Okay, let me slide up and show you what the textbook then tells us on this one. Let me slide back down so you can get most of it on the screen. Okay, so the textbook's answer is yes, you. Um, you would go ahead and pay 829 for it, the yield to maturity, because 15% is greater than your required rate of return of 12%, and it backs into the 988 that we solved above. All right, everyone, that's the answer to Part A and Part B, using Excel as a canvas and as a calculator to solve this one. Thanks, everyone.